Shalom. Call Laila Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem or Kakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the apostles and elders and great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Let's revisit reincarnation. So it's very difficult to understand the Bible without understanding reincarnation and taking for granted that our spirits are eternal. These bodies are just mortal, temporary shells. Most High is not going to destroy an essence of Himself. And that spirit rests in the elect of the house of Israel, the anointed ones. So his spirit is what makes the elect precious, a treasure, and fine jewels on the earth. Leaders, nobles, priests, and kings. Let's start here. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. Genesis 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So... <clears throat> Cain is the oldest, just like Esau was the oldest. But the spirit of prominence and election rests through the loins of Abel, which would go through Seth, that chosen line, <clears throat> because Cain slew his brother Abel. So the flesh does not matter. That somebody is younger than his older brother. Same thing happened when he came back as Jacob and Esau. The Lord said, and the elder shall serve the younger. So we have got to get out of looking through the fleshly lens. <clears throat> so the key point that I want to take away from this, let's read it again. Genesis 4, verse 2. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. <coughs> so keeper of the sheep. So whenever a spirit comes back, it takes the same lot or programming with it. The Most High is not going to reprogram the characteristics of our spirits. They come back doing the same thing. See, let's go here. So a keeper of the sheep. Now let's visit King David, which is Peter. Remember, Yahavashai said, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. So they come back doing the same things. Let's see. Let's go to 1 Samuel 17. David accepts the challenge. 1 Samuel 17. Let's go to verse 21. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. So this spirit would come back and have a tendency to serve. You got it in the military. You got it. 
Spirits do not change. And they just come back every third and fourth generation with the same programming, the same lot. <clears throat> Let's read it again. 1 Samuel 17 and 21. We got to go up to verse 20. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. See, a man of war, a military man that is full of zeal, full of zeal for the battle and a keeper of sheep. We just read it in verse 20. <coughs> Excuse me. First Samuel 17 and 21. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David less. First Samuel 17 and 22. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. See, so we're reading about the characteristics and traits of the spirit of the lot of David. 1 Samuel 17 and 23. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. <clears throat> so this is a man of war. And when we understand reincarnation, that spirit cannot go contrary to its design, the programming from on high. <clears throat> See, let's keep going. We'll get to the key point. Let's start down to verse 33. <clears throat> let's go to verse 32. First Samuel 17, verse 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. See, a military minded man. Verse 33. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth and he a man of war from his youth. The house of Saul walks, talks, and lives in the flesh. Has not the Most High made man's mortal shell? <laughs> made the mind of man. Is not the Lord a man of war? That made the elements and the weapons of war or put it in man's mind to do so. So Saul and the house of Saul is grounded in the flesh. They're stuck in that mode. <clears throat> so he's judging by the flesh of his youth, not the ancient spirit that dwells within. <clears throat> Let's read that again. <clears throat> 1 Samuel 17 and 33. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. Say what? And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. So this shows us the spirit of Abel, 
that went through Seth, that chosen line, which is David, which is Peter. See, let's go back to the beginning. Genesis 4, verse 2. And she bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. <coughs> you see? So Abel, in the, or David in the beginning, was Abel. And notice, we got to get this one. Abel came through the loins of Adam. So when we go here to Revelation 5, <clears throat> Revelation 5, let's go to verse 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, say what? the root of David, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So Adam preceded Abel, which of course precedes King David. But he would also come as Solomon, excuse me, as Solomon, which is Yahweh Shai. So that root and offspring of David, he was the root or the beginning of the family tree of David. And he came through the loins of David as Solomon. <coughs> See, let's go to Revelation 22 and 16. I, Yahweh Shai, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So this house of David is very notable in the last days. Why? Because it has to be rebuilt, restored. Well, you know, how I to fulfill prophecy and occupy his rightful throne and share that joint inheritance with the kings and priests of the house of David. <clears throat> so we read that, showing the similarity here. See, let's go back. 1 Samuel 17, verse 34. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after, 1 Samuel 17 and 35, and I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. When he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. So he's watching over the flock is what we're reading about. And these ferocious animals can also be the adversaries of Israel, enemies of Israel, enemies of the Lord's flock. So he is a keeper of the sheep. See? <clears throat> you don't think Yahweh Shai knew that? Yahweh Shai knows everything. He knows. Let's go here to John 21. Book of John, chapter 21, verse 17. I'm going to get straight to the point, not feeling too good. John 21 and 17. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh shall I say unto him, feed my sheep. So Abel, King David, 
are watching over the Lord's flock from grievous wolves or wicked Israelites and the other nations. So that's his lot. And he has a military mindset. <clears throat> Let's focus on these sheep. Let's go to Genesis 29, verse 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're in Genesis chapter 29, verse 9. Let's go to verse 8. We gotta go up. No, let's go to nine. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. So spirits come back in their lot. Abel, David, Jacob, and take on the same features that the Lord created them to have. So they're in like auto mode, autopilot, <clears throat> can't help themselves. Matter of fact, let's go here. So watering the Lord's flock, feed my sheep. Just like Yahushai told Peter. <clears throat> See, let's let's go to to prove that. I'm trying to find a good one. Let's go to, <clears throat> excuse me. I think it's one in, let's see here, Jeremiah. <clears throat> yes, Jeremiah 17 and 7. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. See? So, Jacob was watering the flock. That water represents Yahushai. Let's get one more to prove that. <clears throat> On John 4, verse 13, Yehoshai answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So these men would just come and occupy the lot by which they were created to do. Let's go back to that. Genesis 29, <clears throat> verse 10. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the whale's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. I'm not going to make this long, but it also reminds me of Moses that split the rock, if I'm not mistaken, at Orab, that flowed and watered the flock, which are the congregation of the children of Israel. Moses did this. Anyway, I'm not trying to make this too long. Let's get two more. <clears throat> See? First Chronicles 22. <clears throat> so, talking about David, Solomon charged with the task. <clears throat> Excuse me. First Chronicles 22 and 6. Then he called for Solomon, his son, and charged him to build 
a house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, my son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. Let's look at Solomon's name here. So King David is a man after the Lord's heart or mind. Let's look up Solomon. <clears throat> Solomon. Shalom or shal Shalom. Or Shalomah. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so he represents peace. And this is going to happen again. Yahweh Shai, that is King Solomon, coming back a second time to occupy the house of the throne of David. So only he can do that, which tells us David even needs mercy and a savior, which Yahweh Shai is the embodiment of mercy and grace. He is the lamb or the sacrificial lamb of the house of Israel. <clears throat> First Chronicles 22, verse 7. And David said to Solomon, my son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly, and has made great wars. Thou shalt not build a house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. A military man. See? So, he even needs mercy. So, Yahweh Shai is that mercy seat. <clears throat> and also, blood is committing iniquity. So we need the lamb, Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 9. First Chronicles 22 and 9. Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon, and I will give you peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. Now, this happened back then. Israel enjoyed 40 years of peace. And it's going to happen again when he comes back as Yahweh And this peace is going to be forever and ever and ever. Perpetuity of time, eternity. <clears throat> So notice, King Solomon is being raised up unto David that we read about in Jeremiah 23, and I believe it's verse 5. So the Most High does not change his playbook. He's not going to change his MO because we disagree with it and don't like how the script or the storyline is written. <clears throat> First Chronicles 22 and 10. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Connects to Daniel 7, verse 14, verse 18, and verse 27 in the book of Daniel 7. An everlasting kingdom. This is the Davidic dynasty on steroids, built back better, stronger, wiser, <clears throat> mighty men. Now, my son, the Lord be with thee, and prosper thou, and build the house of the Lord, my God, as he hath said unto thee. Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding and give thee charge concerning Israel, that thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy God. So Solomon, which is coming back as Yahweh Shai, 
a second time is going to establish the eternal throne. So he must occupy that throne that's being built of the house of David, which means all nations are going to be subdued. Remember, the world shall study war no more. Pursuant to Isaiah chapter 2, Micah chapter 4. And I love going here too. This is one of my favorites. Let's close out here. So all nations are going to be subdued, which makes sense. That happened in the old days. Under um, King David shedding much blood, standing for his people. So Rebuilding the tabernacle of David automatically equates to the other nations going into slavery, period. <clears throat> Psalm 72, verse 6. Let's go, yeah, verse 6. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. So Yahweh Shai's glory is going to be seen by all the world. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. In his days shall the righteous flourish and abundance of peace as long as the moon endureth. So this is not just talking about the old days under Solomon, because that was only 40 years. So this is a future prophecy that we're transitioning into now. <coughs> so King Solomon had an expiration date on a peaceful period, only 40 years. But this new kingdom is never going to fade away. Because the Israelites are going to have new bodies and be changed. <clears throat> Psalm 72, verse 7. In his days shall the righteous flourish in abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river unto the ends of the earth. Let's get this one too. I love this one. Let's go to verse 9. So, the, the, so this is the kingdom. The world was made for the Israelites' sake. So this is going to be gifted to the Lord's faithful servants. <clears throat> take the kingdom or take the world. They showed it in that movie, Brightburn. Take the world. So this is going to happen. The Bible says that the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. See, let's go down to, let's close out right here. Psalm 72 and 9. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him and his enemies shall lick the dust. So the enemies of Israel are going to be beat to powder. They're going to be Lowly, like worms on the earth, peasants, servants, and handmaids. So this is going to be fulfilled. We have a lot to look forward to through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Let's get one more. Let's go to Luke 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. Book of Luke chapter 1. Let's go to verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Yehoshai. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. See? So Yehoshai Excuse me, Solomon occupied the throne of his father, David. So has the Most High changed? All nations were slaves. 
starting with David, followed by King Solomon, which is Yahweh Shai. So rebuilding this house is the real new world order. <clears throat> so this one beautifully lines up with Jeremiah 23 and 5. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Oh, oh, we can't miss that one. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. So we're not going to see the resurrection of a third Roman empire or a third beast. Luferigno on steroids. Nowhere in the scriptures. <clears throat> and Luferigno might be a Jake. So I might be going off on that one. And if I am, so lock you. See, Luke 1, verse 70. Oh, we got to go up. Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. So a house of David must have a savior, a great one, who is without fault, without sin, in Hawashai. So King David's hands being filthy with blood also represents iniquity. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, lines up perfectly with Psalms 83. All the other nations outside of the elect of the house of Israel, the Davidic up-and-coming kings and priests, to perform the promise to perform the mercy promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which we know is David. That's why we read Genesis 29 and 10. So everything just comes back around. There is no such thing as this is brand new. The spirits come back in their lot because they're programmed to occupy the parameters by which they were built within or their specs, if you will, specifications. Every spirit has its own unique set of specs or specifications, a, a specific lot. Anyway, I've talked enough. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises be to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yashirala in the Bab Baba. We got next, Lord willing. Orakatham, Shalom. And I want to say uh, thank you, brothers, for the prayer. I was feeling real bad earlier today, but the, sent a note on the chat. And brothers prayed for me, so I appreciate it. The water Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Bless you all. Shalom.